Well, thank you so much for, for taking the time to chat with me today. I am already a huge fan of the series, so I'm excited uh, for the full season to come out. Um, yeah, it's so are we. We um we can't wait. It's um yeah. I was delighted when I heard that we had a September air date. I you know, in the strike environment, I had no idea what was gonna parlay for, for us getting getting it out there. So I was delighted that we're gonna air soon. Yeah, well well then just to kind of start off, what were you most excited about when you received the call to work on this project? I mean, was this an opportunity that that you felt closely aligned with projects you've worked on in the past, or was this maybe diving into some new artistic territory? Well, to me, the the main thing when I first got the script was I responded really well to the script. I was not personally familiar with Dan Ariely, who is the um, inspiration for um, Alec Mercer character. And I responded well to the idea that this Israeli man could be parlayed into an American character the way the way it was. It seemed like a real leap. And I was fascinated by, well, what's it going to take to do that? And then when I found out that um, David Frankel was attached, he's a director that I really am familiar with his work and some of his recent work with that Inventing Anna um, series, I really responded to. So I, um, I was very excited on that level. And then when I met Erica, the showrunner who was the creator of the show, and I learned just how much effort she'd put into creating the show. Um, it just felt like a good fit. That triangle of people felt felt good. And the fact that Jesse Martin was attached, he has spent a lot of time working in Vancouver. So he's a popular person in this city. So, uh, you know, that was a, a nice little perk too. Yeah, you know, I was actually going to ask you about Jesse because I know that you worked on some episodes of Supergirl, which happens to cross over, you know, with with the Flash. So I didn't know if there you happened to cross paths at any point, or if this was the first time you were collaborating. Um, it was the first time. Um, the crossover episodes of Supergirl, I was not there for any of them. Which, you know, after I heard about a, what a monstrous task they were, I was kind of grateful for. So, no, that was the first time I met him. But um, given that his, as I was saying, the Israeli man that was the motive or the inspiration rather for his character, we were pretty careful, myself and Bradley, the um, set decorator, we prepped a, a good presentation of how we were going to make his office and, you know, kind of take um, Dan Ariely's kind of cerebral approach to his work and parlay it into um, Alec character's world. So, yeah, I I didn't know him in advance, but um, I got to know him a bit during the prep for the series. And he was an easy, easy man to work with, I found. Well, you know, I also have some questions about kind of setting up the the crime scenes and, and the inspiration behind those. I mean, when you're first envisioning them, do you have any on-set advisors from law enforcement that you can kind of bounce ideas off of? Or were you doing, you know, a lot of your own research? Um, a combination of the two. Um, we set up a really good liaison within the FBI so that we could get procedure and visuals on the FBI office that we ended up studio build. Um, and we learned an awful lot on that level. The um, In the pilot, I'll speak mainly to that because it's the one that airs first. The pilot had um, a crime scene that was based on an influencer who self-taped her own um, connection with the web. And I did an awful lot of research and found out some of the technical challenges that people of that discipline have to meet. And it became something that was tied into the writing in that there was screen captures that were part of the process of Alex figuring out what really happened. So it was a combo of the two, but um, the research that we do is a really important part of it. And when David Frankel, the director, requested a very, very modern approach and look to things, uh, we negotiated a bit and we came up with a lot of artwork that's the dominant thing in the influencer's apartment. So 
that was all self-produced within the art department to to generate that look and to support the fact that that character, we never really saw her um, on air per se. She was deceased when, when the show started. So it was a, a tricky one to convey. It's, it's like the backstory is in the walls in the, in the building more than in her uh, performance. How involved do you get to be in the actual storyline conversations? Because I mean, I, I imagine you need to know how this set up during crime scenes, especially is going to pave the way for, you know, story reveals that might come later on. Uh, to me, that's a minor part of what I'm responsible for. Um, that is more Erica's responsibility. She and the writer of each episode have their own research that they do, and they'll share it with us. And then I do a parallel bunch of research that more often than not simply confirms what they've already come up with. But sometimes there'll be nuanced aspects to it that you know I feel we can deliver on really, really well. And I'll point that out and it's really up to Erica whether it gets incorporated into the scripts or not. Are there are there certain details that you focus on during the crime scene setups, like you know the placement of the body, certain things being in disarray, or does each scene kind of require a, a fresh perspective? It's unique to the storyline because our show, each crime has a beginning, middle, and an end within each episode, so each one is unique to the episode and. I focus mainly on the accuracy of it. I try really, really hard to make it feel like it's within the setting that it should be and that we choose locations that support it well. And the props master has to deliver the crime scene elements accurately. And we've got somebody who's really, really good at that. So the details are very, very important. And it's a collaborative effort to deliver them. Well, there, there's a lot of different departments, obviously, that kind of fall under the production design umbrella. Um, is there one department that you felt required kind of an especially large amount of creativity on the team's part? Yes. Um, the set decorator, Bradley Lang, he and I, we've worked together for three or four years now, and we're we're good collaborators. And that's the department that more than anything sets it up so that, I mean, traditionally when you walk into a new set, that's where you'll find wide shots that are the most revealing for the backstory. And those are the ones that I, I care very deeply about. And then once you get deeper in the scene, you're into tight work that is more props based, but um, yeah, the, the decoration of it and the coordination of the decoration with the costume designer is very important. You know, you always want to avoid the, you know, plaid wallpaper and plaid outfits. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, well, I was also wondering, you know, when you and the team are looking at locations, I mean, either for crime scenes or stunts that may require a certain amount of space, um, kind of what are the parameters, you know, what are you looking for here that's different than the kind of spaces you were searching for on um, shows like A Million Little Things? That's a really good question because, you know, our show is based on an eight day turnaround, fairly normal. And my background was in feature films where stunts would often get their own second unit for two days. And we instead have to do it all main unit, often just in one day. So anything to do with stunt related or, um, you know, driving work and whatnot, the efficiency is the key thing. So we have to choose locations that support it. And the stunt coordinator is rarely there when we're doing the, the choices, unless it's a very clear one where they, they need to bring in the coordinator for scouting locations. So between myself the first AD, the director, and the DP, we all have to be responsible for knowing that we're choosing a location and approach to doing any stunt-related elements that's achievable. And, you know, that takes a lot of experience. And we were lucky on this show that um, all of the directors were good, solid, rock-solid directors. And... 
we I think we made consistently good choices on that that level. Is there, um, I mean, it might be stunts, but is there, is there a certain type of scene, you know, ranging from just like, oh, like a, an emotional scene or, um, you know, kind of a shootout scene that you find the most challenging to create the right environment for? I would say that the most challenging one was the university settings, because the heart of the story is the action of the crime solving, but the backstory of what makes Alec, what he is, is the university setting, the academic world. So bringing that to life, making that a backstory is really important so that it supports his character. And, you know, if he, if he just stood behind a lecture lectern, you know, for 20 minutes of every episode, that's pretty boring. So bringing it to life giving the director the opportunity to have people in motion moving from one place to another, supporting the the two characters that are his research assistants, making them um, be able to contribute to the reality of that is the university setting and the backstory for Jesse's character. That was a big challenge. It doesn't sound tremendously exciting, but without giving it its due, um, Alex's character, I don't think, could go out into the field and give the analytical um, dialogue that he needs to give without the backstory of the university. Well, while I have you, I did see that you were the art director for This Means War, um, which was actually one of my favorite films when I was a teenager. So I had to, of course, ask you, um, you know, if maybe that film had any impact on the projects you've been involved in in more recent years or, you know, just what you felt that kind of did for your career. I love that film. And it speaks to what I was referring to earlier, that that's the training ground that I draw on for knowing when you've got five days to pull off a stunt, you know, one or two days of main unit and three days of second unit to take that and the quality that that generates and then be able to deliver it in television quickly and more efficiently. That's, that's one of the things that I draw on that I find very, very important in my career.